this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to continue our Trading View PineScript development series that we started in the last video, where we began covering our uh, basic indicator, which was just a simple moving average that we plotted onto the chart. We just had one simple moving average on the chart. Now, in our second video, we're going to add uh, three moving averages but before we get started I just wanted to show you I'm not sure if I showed you this in the last video or not but when you're working on your scripts and I showed you how to start working on them I'm not sure if I showed you how to sh have them show up on your screen but make sure you save them when you're working on them so you don't lose any changes but then also uh, just as important if you want to see what you're doing hit add to chart it's going to add the indicator to the chart and then as you make saves it'll update the chart with the changes that you've made once you save those changes. So in the last video we went over uh, pretty much all the basics to the scripting uh, for ind an indicator and in this one we're going to be adding in two more indicators and honestly I know it's not that difficult if you're a, a developer but uh, for those of you following along who don't know what's going on, it, it's good that we take this kind of slow. The next video, there's going to be a lot more changes, which means the next video is going to be a lot longer. But for now, we're still trying to uh, get a grip on what's going on. So let's take a look here. In the last video, we only had one input, and that was for our only moving average for the period, the look back period on that moving average. Now, uh, in, in this one, we have three moving averages, so obviously we will need three inputs. That way, users can configure each moving average. And to be able to configure it, you need to go up to the settings in your script, and you can toggle that data, or you can type in other ones, and it'll affect the indicator and that's because as you can see we are doing the indicator calculation based on that input so in this particular case I changed our simple moving average to an exponential moving average and this is another built-in moving average uh, part of trading view and it'll tell you here when you hover over it, it'll give you some pretty detailed tool tips over what's going on with these built-in functions and if you want you can actually hold down the control key and click these functions and it should come up with this uh, reference so even though I'm giving you the links here um, you can also just control click some of these things now which is great uh, I didn't know about that the other day and it's really detailed and can give you quite a bit of information some of these things don't make sense so you're probably still gonna have to google some things uh, that aren't super clear but uh, it's really handy if you kinda have an idea of what you're doing so in the last video we only had the one moving average it was a simple moving average and it had the exact same code other than the the E was an S so I mean it's really easy to change what indicator you're using if you're uh, just in here coding it say we want to actually change this to a weighted moving average that's all you would have to do to change the moving average there I'm gonna turn that back to an exponential moving average and you can see we did the same thing for the other indicators and we had different variables of course because these are all different indicators we need a different period for each one so we also need a different value spit out for each one so you can see on this one bar where these three dots are this is the MA3 value this is the MA2 value and this is the MA1 value this one's calculated a 50 period this one's at 100 and this one's at 200 by default so when we do these built-in moving average calculations, it's going to spit out the current value, which is where we're at right now. These kind of operate in succession from beginning to end. This is time series data. So you can see the calculations are performed one after the other all the way through the script, or all the way through the data, I should say, until we get to here. And you can see the most recent version of these. And there's actually, uh, these are actually kind of an array. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to plot the previous value, say we wanted to kind of offset it, we could spit in the value of the array there uh, and look at the previous version. But we're not doing anything like that now. We're just kind of doing a standard indicator, just showing our exponential moving averages. And we can see on the chart where they cross 
and get an idea of where maybe some support or resistance might be based on these moving averages. And then beyond that, the only thing left in the video is plotting the other moving averages. Now I said this video is really simple. It really is. Uh, the plots are probably the simplest thing you can do here. You're passing in the data that you want to plot. So I told you this uh, time series. So over time, it'll continue to plot and connect them uh, with this. And you can see we used a green color for the 50 period and the line width was two. Now I changed the line width and color for each one so that they would stand out more from one another. But that's all there is to having three indicators on a single chart and changing some of this other information around and having a, uh, an input for each particular indicator so that we can change and configure this how we need to. Now this is just getting started. There's obviously a lot of things that we can change and configure about this. And in the next video, we're actually going to take a look at making it to where we can configure the lines to select which uh, moving average we want. You can see the scripting tutorial three, I renamed this to triple many moving averages because in the next video we're going to start looking at how we can uh, allow the user to select different moving averages for each of these lines. So instead of this having to be a fixed value where it's always an exponential moving average, when they come in to edit the indicator settings, not only will they be able to choose the period, they'll also be able to choose the uh, the moving average type. So they can choose simple moving average, exponential moving average, weighted moving averages. Uh, they'll get to choose through a number of moving averages that they can just quickly change in the settings here for the indicator. But that's all for this video. Like I said, this one was going to be pretty quick. If you're curious, you can always check out my TradingView profile, uh, which I'm going to try to keep up to date. I've been posting ideas and scripts left and right. So that's in the description of the video. Uh, you can also find the source code for these there. I'm also going to be posting these in my GitHub account eventually. They aren't there as of the time of making this video, but they will be shortly. And just follow and uh, like on YouTube here and I'll see you in the next video. We got a lot of great stuff coming up. In fact, I'll give you a sneak peek. I almost forgot. So let's load one of these new ones. Consider really this one. Let's load one of the new ones. We'll go way ahead. Uh, you can see we've got quite a lot here. There's a lot of input now. And it's also spitting out a lot of stuff too. These are the outputs. You can see it's actually forecasting data past the end. So there's a lot of things we're going to go into, including crossovers. So stay tuned. There's a lot of great things coming. And I appreciate you watching.